So the question we're trying to answer here is, we've got three vectors, and we want to find the sum of these three vectors. So vector A uh, is a displacement of 12 meters in the direction of north, 37 degrees east. B is 15 meters in magnitude, the direction of 15 degrees east of south, or south 50 degrees east. And C is 6 meters uh, in magnitude in a direction of south 30 degrees west. So before we get too far into this, let's just draw ourselves a diagram so we're clear on what these vectors look like. So I'll give myself a set of coordinate axes here, and I'll put north, east, south, and west. So vector A, 12 meters long, so we'll go from the origin, 12 meters. And if it's north, 37 degrees east, that's telling us that this angle in here is 37 degrees. So this vector is 37 degrees east of north. And this is vector A. Vector B is 15 meters and it is south 50 degrees east. So it's 50 degrees east of due south. And that's vector B. Vector C is 6 meters long and it is south 30, 30 degrees west. So 30 degrees west of south. 30 degrees this is vector C, and it's got a magnitude of 6. Now, in order to add these vectors, these three vectors together, what we're going to do is we're going to pick two of them, add them together, and find the resultant. Then we're going to take that resultant vector and add the third vector onto it. Now, the method that we're going to use to add them is going to be the same both times. We're going to use the cosine law to find the magnitude, and then the sine law to find the direction. Now, in order to add these vectors together, we have to place them tip to tail. So I'm just going to start a new diagram here where I'm going to take vector A and vector B and I'm going to place them tip to tail. And to get the angle straight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a coordinate axis here. This is going to be vector A here. We know the magnitude of vector A is 12 and the angle that we had here was again 37 degrees. Okay. We're going to take vector B, again, placing it tip to tail. We know that the magnitude of B was 15 meters. And to be clear on the angle that B is going at, at this point where A and B meet, I'm going to give myself another little set of coordinate axes. Just dot it in there like that because the, the angle that we were given for B was this angle in here between the vector B and due south. So we knew that that was 50 degrees. And then we can put in our resultant. It's going to come down like this, and we'll call this R1, just like that. So to find the magnitude of R1, we're going to use the cosine law. We've got one side of the triangle, another side of the triangle, what we need is this angle in between these two vectors. We know this is 37 over here, so that means by this Z pattern that this angle in here has to be 37 as well. So this whole angle between A and B is going to be 37 degrees plus 50 degrees 87 degrees. So now we can set up our cosine law. Magnitude of R1 squared is going to be our two sides, 12 squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times 12 times 15 times the cosine of the angle between them, 87 degrees. Then we can go through and we can work that out, evaluating the right-hand side, taking the square root, and we'll find that the magnitude of R1 
is 18.71. Next, we're going to need the direction of vector r1. When we're finding directions in this kind of question, we're going to have to find an angle. The best angle to find is this one in here, which is close to where our original uh, original coordinate axis was, or where the starting point of vector A was. Because that's going to let us um, express the direction of vector R1 relative to uh, our original north, south, east, and west. So we're going to find this angle, theta, in here. And to do this, we're going to use uh, sine law. So we know that the sine of theta divided by the side opposite it, the opposite side there is 15, is going to equal sine of 87 degrees divided by the magnitude of R1, 18.71. And we can go through and we can work that out. So in that calculation, we get that theta is 53.19 degrees. So let's just stop right here and express what vector R1 is. R1 is a magnitude of 18.71. And to get its direction, we're going to have to add up the 37 degrees we had for vector A and the 53 0.19 that we had for that, fact, that, that angle theta. So we can add those together down here, 37 degrees plus 53.19 degrees gives us 90 0.19 degrees. So vector R1 is 18.71 meters and its direction is going to be north 90.19 degrees east. Okay. So the next step is to take vector R1 and add to it the third vector that we have in our question and that was vector C. So we'll start a new diagram here just to keep things clear. We had a set of coordinate axes here we had vector R1 right here, which was magnitude of 18.71, and the angle from here to here was 90.19. Vector C, we'll draw our little coordinate axis like this, came down here like this. It had a magnitude of 6. And the angle that we were given for vector C was that the angle between C and south was 30 degrees. We want the vector sum of R1 and C, so our resultant is going to look like this, and we'll call this R2. So we're going to use the same method we used before. We have one side of our triangle, the other side of our triangle, we need this angle in between. And what I can see from this is that if we've got 30 degrees, if C is 30 degrees from due south, this angle in here has to be 60 degrees plus this tiny little bit in here. That tiny little bit is going to be the same as this tiny little bit, from up here by the, the, the Z pattern. And from here to here, we got 90 degrees. So this little tiny bit in here is going to be 0 0.19, which means this angle between my two vectors has got to be 60 degrees plus 0 0.19 degrees, or 60.19 degrees. Once we have the angle between those two vectors, we can set up our cosine law. So the magnitude of R2 squared is going to be 
6 squared plus 18.71 squared minus 2 times 6 times 18.71 times the cosine of the angle between them, 60.19. And we can work all that out and find that the magnitude of our, of our second resultant is 16.57. We've got the magnitude, now we need the direction. So we've got to find one of the angles in this triangle here. So the angle that we want to find is this one up here because that one we can combine with the 90 degrees, 90.19 degrees that we already know to figure out um, where this vector is relative to our original coordinate system. So we'll call this angle theta 2 and we'll set up our sine law. Sine theta 2 divided by the side opposite it, which is 6, is going to equal the sine of our 60 0.19 degrees divided by the length of the side opposite it, which is the magnitude of R2, which I should just put in the 16.57 that we calculated. And again, we can work all this out, and we find that this angle, theta 2, is 18.31 degrees. So all that's left now is to sum everything up by expressing this vector R2 relative to our original coordinate system. So the angle that we're going to want here is because this is in our southeastern quadrant is we're going to want the angle that this vector is south of east. Sorry, east of south. So how can we work that out? Well, that angle is going to be 180 degrees minus 90.19 from north to our first resultant vector. We'll also take away the 18.31 between our first resultant and our second resultant, which will give us an angle of 71.5 degrees. And that lets us come to the very end here and say, therefore, the sum of the three vectors is 16.57 meters. And our direction was south, 71.5 degrees east.